set of spanners from Aldi. 10 to 32, 32 pounds. Don't matter if they break. I can hear the applause. Alphas, 6 to 32, 50 pounds. Yeah, which is going to last longer? Alphas. Aldi. Alfred. We'll see. We'll come back in two years' time. We'll see who's crying over broken spanners. <laughs> yeah, because it won't be lovely. Ratchet ones, look. You see all those ratchet spanners? Yeah, yeah. hang on, yeah, some have got fingerprints on. 8 to 19. Is that yeah, when you I picked know, them up and turned spanners. them over? Fingers with tools. I'd rather be like Dino here and be a bit of a shotgun and just have everything and hope you can do it. Or you can just have sort of like specialist stuff and make everything work, you know? You know, professional. Yeah, go on. Professional. What's not professional about that? Well, you see, the thing is, you've just got shitload of everything here, whereas I can make one thing do many jobs. You need many things to do one job. I don't know if you actually got that, what Tom was saying uh, about having tools, and he does have a point, and he's right and he's wrong, because... Each fitter has his own way of having his toolbox, and it's uh, uh, very, very subjective. Well, what we'll see here is, well, actually, uh, Steve <laughs> dumped his tools and went home rather quickly. He didn't have time to uh, sort them out. But he is a busy mechanic. He has his tools how he wants to. He knows where they are, and he gets the job done. And Tom does too. He's a very tidy man. He says he has uh, the right tools for the right job, whereas Dino has a load of tools and as a shotgun effect, uh, he's got uh, many tools to do one job. Well, they're both right, and uh, yeah, these guys, well, actually, they're quite tidy in uh, looking after their toolboxes. Tom is now qualified, and Dino is a first-year apprentice. Now, Tom has learned how to use his tools, and Dino is still working. You can see how tidy Tom is. He's very organised. How much did your snap-on or Mac Air gun cost? Two hundred pounds. This cost me ninety. The exact same job. That cost about hundred twenty. Oh look, we got fight the toolbox has come. <laughs> right, right, cost, fight the toolbox has come. I spent this much on my toolbox because, <laughs> and I spent this much on my tools. <laughs> you actually got quite a lot of tools now, so I'm, I'm impressed with you. Well, you can't fault that. And uh, in your career, you could actually go through a lot of tools and a lot of toolboxes. Like I do, I change quite regularly. I've got another toolbox. This one, this was last week. Uh, this was the arrangement of how we had our toolboxes. It didn't feel comfortable. I've got mine back together. Now, the guys have uh, put theirs together. We've got a new cupboard, and I have an L-tub arrangement, which for me is absolutely brilliant, and I've got working tops. Um, end of the day, charging our batteries up, the drills and the battery powered guns and uh, this is a necessity nowadays in a modern workshop, you, you don't always get a availability of an airline fitting. Uh, Tom likes my battery gun for some reason, he's going to have to buy his own at some point and this gets worked hard, he actually uses it more than I do. Now, yeah, I'll have that. He says, no, but I'm not going to lend. I'm not going to let him have it. I'll lend it to him every now and then. Anyway, this is my um, air and a battery powered drawer. You can well, you can see what I've got: drills, drivers, and a three quarter and half inch. I've already shown this on a, a different video. Um, yeah, you've seen these on different videos during the series LR TV. Uh, nothing to write home about really. This is my favourite gun. It works harder than anything else. This one now is actually, this is starting to prove itself, the DeWalt. Doing a lot of um, screwing of floorboards and such like. And of course I have a cut off tools. And uh, right, actually this is a new addition. These are pickle forks for the uh, air hammer. And these are stepped ones. They work brilliantly. A uh, little Mac gun I showed you last week along with my three quarter drive. These live in a different box in the top there because I use them more than anything at all, especially when I'm on uh, doing breaks and such like. And uh, I don't have that many tools. I have more at home still, and I still have uh, like new sockets. I keep them at home, use them at home occasionally. It means I don't have to uh, carry these backwards and forwards. So I actually have a big collection, and some of them are missing. I need to replace at some point. 
And yeah, I like uh, to have, well, at least semi-tidy tools. In my bottom drawer, I do a lot of ABS uh, faults on trailers, actually, and uh, I've got just the right kit at the moment for the trailers I'm working on. And my toolbox change is as I do different vehicles. I've got a puller here for a hub, and in this box has a lot of different cables for diagnostics plugging in and the such like. Um, this is diagnostic Wabco diagnostic plugins, and uh, the Disco ABS. Uh, you'll uh, probably recognise that this is the same as the uh, HGV um, trailer sensors, and we do a lot of these. They fail actually quite often, so I'm forever testing them and changing them as required. This sort of uh, cabling we get on trailers is ADR, which is very hard wearing. And yeah, I do like to collect my cables, make sure I've got enough to get the job done. Our air gauges are always calibrated um, every six months and the piping is renewed as required. Um, this little thing here, if you're a truck driver, this actually tells you if your ABS uh, cable isn't working. And this is ABS and you can see it's got two pins missing. That would be a can line uh, if I had the other two high and low. Right, anyway, um, yeah, this is ABS systems that I usually deal with. Uh, the later ones now are all EBS. So, right, uh, this is a bolt on earth that I use if I have to. And that's pure copper with brass nuts. It gives me an excellent earth. My uh, electrical uh, drawer. Little tube here has got something called mole poles in them. You connect them together like a, a, a chimney sweep brush, push a pipe down. This is an insulator cutter for cable, works brilliantly. And these here are for uh, cleaning pins on plug sockets, which also for a 12 or 24. I also have the oldest fashioned way of doing things, which is a light bulb cables to put a load on a circuit so I can then test it. And uh, yeah, some of the old techniques never die, even though we do use quite modern diagnostics. Again, I have another ABS a plug tester, uh, along with a simple multimeter and a trailer plug socket tester, which is for MOT testing. And yeah, we do a lot of uh, both types of trailers, big and small. Okay, so this is my uh, various drawer. Um, this is for a uh, MIG welder. This is to clean out the uh, shroud and to cut the wire. That's a recent addition, actually. But yeah, I mean, I, I keep odds and sods and only the stuff I need for work. Tire depth gauge, mirrors, scrapers. Uh, I'm not doing any engine jobs here. I filter uh, mole grip and mole grips and uh, yeah, an exhaust cutter. We do quite a few exhausts here as well. And here's my spanner drawer. Ratchet spanners tend to fail after a while, so that's odds and sods. Um, I don't have that many spanners here, and the ones I'm using the most are the long-handled, or what you call aircraft spanners. Ratchet spanners here, and of course, slugging spanners. I showed you the slugging spanner um, last week. Uh, they're invaluable at the moment for undoing uh, hard-to-get-at bolts. And of course, as I said, the aircraft spanners, I have um, ratchet ones and normal ones. Ratchet ones actually do fail, and sometimes I cut them off and just keep the heads. This one, the ratchets failed on this, 24, 22 and 24s. This is for hydraulic pipes or uh, hydraulic coupling fittings. And of course, I just keep uh, the odd crap spanner that I might need. Now at home, I yeah, I have quite a few tools, the tools I don't need in my toolbox and you can see I have well quite a lot of spanners everything from stubbies uh, the old-fashioned ones and some really crap old cheap ones which sometimes they do come in useful if I'm going to bend them up and uh, they're sort of odd shapes all right so screwdriver drawers and uh, yeah well-worn screwdrivers and uh, I've got plenty of them and you'll also see here, I'll just uh, move this Haldex brake plate out of the way. And what I have here is uh, O-ring removers. They're non-destructive. And also I have the hooks as well. And this is a recent addition, just to quickly get uh, O-rings off. And you can see that these torque um, screwdrivers, they're well-worn. I use them a hell of a lot, even for just removing um, light lenses and the such like. 
I don't have much silverware, to be honest with you, nowadays with the sockets and extensions. This is about all I've got because I tend to use battery and air most of the time. So I don't even have a ratchet. <coughs> so this is my uh, toolbox snap-on. This one I'm actually paying for on the knock. Now, um, my uh, hammer drawer. That's Tom just messing about with her tape measure. Copper rawhide and plenty of soft-headed hammers and hard-headed hammers. They all have a use and varying sizes. Um, you'll get that if you're interested in the length of them. Plenty of punches and uh, chisels. And again, obviously, a pipe uh, coupling tools, which uh, probably nobody's interested in. That's just for um, factory pipe couplings. And you can see I sort of have a comprehensive toolkit, but it is only the tools I use. I have the tools for the job rather than uh, having the shotgun effect of having loads of tools uh, for the same job, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, anyway, right, I usually clean uh, my... Uh, tools in WD-40. Tom does his in uh, brake cleaner. Now this uh, this is my uh, new addition thanks to uh, Neil from Forby. Charges up on a mobile phone charger and is actually quite bright. Um, this is actually at home. It went flat at work. So I like the stainless top of my toolboxes and because they're wiped clean a wooden top on a toolbox for me is a bit of a disaster because yeah I do uh, um, drop tools on these tops. It seems to be very durable. WD-40 cleans them, but it doesn't remove coffee stains. Okay, now at home I have a range of tools for Land Rovers. You can see this. This is a specialist stuff. My lodge has actually moved out and he was living there for about two years. And I've taken up the room now and I've turned it into a a tool room for the time being just to collect all my tools together and I have a lot of test equipment bicycle repair tools uh, welding kit etc etc and it's all in one place at the moment it's not outside in a shed it's uh, in somewhere where it's not going to cause corrosion um, so you can see basically that I yeah I don't have a fetish of tools it's just stuff that I need for well when I need it so you get the idea that <laughs> You know, this is like sometimes a 24-7 hobby and at work. Down here is my oscilloscope, which I do actually take to work, and I bring it back home again. I don't leave it there. Okay, so you get a general idea of what I'm about and what tools I have. You've seen a lot of them on the channel, and there are actually a few here yet you haven't seen, which I will uh, eventually show you. The Anvil Challenge. Go on, Tom. Head up, head up. He can't do it. Only the rifle one can pick up the anvil. 